Picture this. You walk into a classroom and the only grown-up is the one in your head. No teacher, no aide, just 30, year 8 pupils wearing headsets and chatting with an AI that greets them like old friends. Hey Maya, still crushing it in Minecraft? Let's hit photosynthesis next. Sounds wild, right? We thought so too until we tried it. Same school, same curriculum, same month. Half the kids kept their teachers, the other half learned only from our custom AI tutor. We tracked grades, attendance, and honestly the part that kept us up at night. How well kids still act like human beings when their adult is literally made of code. What we found wasn't just about test scores. It was about belonging, bias, trust, and what it means to grow up human in a world where your classroom could be staffed by an algorithm. Here's what you'll learn in this video. The wild differences in how AI and human teaching shaped behavior. The shocking exam results that flipped our assumptions. The ethical dilemmas that no one talks about when you put AI in front of kids. And finally, the lessons that every parent, teacher and policymaker needs to hear before schools dive headfirst into AI. Welcome back to Mentors Mindset. We teamed up with a state-funded secondary school, your typical tight-budget, nothing-fancy campus. After parents signed off, we split year eight straight down the middle. Thirty kids stayed the course with Mrs. Lee and her worksheets. The other thirty walked into a room that looked like a recording studio, had a baby with a spaceship. Noise-cancelling booths, crisp cameras, microphones sensitive enough to pick up a muttered sigh, and at the centre, an AI we nicknamed Atlas. Class wasn't just chat GPT copy-pasted into a laptop, it was tuned to the national curriculum, wrapped in privacy protocols and trained to recognise not just answers, but hesitation, tone and frustration. If a student muttered, er, uh, three times, Atlas flagged it. If a kid doodled instead of typing, Atlas shifted to visual prompts. And here's the kicker. There were no humans in the room, no substitute teacher lurking in the corner. No one to step in if things went sideways. The only instruction we gave the kids was Learn however Atlas teaches you best. We wanted to see what would happen when code and curiosity collided without adult interference. Spoiler, we got more than we bargained for. Day one felt like launch day for a new game. The novelty was electric. Atlas, spit me a mitochondria rap. Three versions dropped instantly. Grime, pop and even country. And the classroom exploded in laughter. Engagement maxed out. For the first two days it felt like the AI group had hacked education. Kids who normally slouched in the back were sitting upright, eyes locked on screens, but by Wednesday, though, cracks showed. Maya, usually top of the class, asked Atlas why photosynthesis matters. Atlas answered with textbook precision. Energy transfer, oxygen production, survival of ecosystems, all correct. But Maya stared at her empty desk, hand half raised, before remembering no one was coming to her rescue. The silence was deafening. Meanwhile, Jacob muted Atlas and leaned over to Liam. What page are we on? Lid habits die hard. Even in an AI-only classroom, kids reached for each other when stuck. Screen time averaged six hours. Atlas cranked out 4,300 personalized questions and flagged seven kids sliding off track. Across the hall, the control group yawned through chapter two at human speed. The contrast was stunning. On paper, AI was winning, but in the hallways, that was another story. By week two, Atlas flipped a switch. It started weaving in micro quizzes every 10 minutes. Wrong answer, instant retry, no judgment. Right answer, kids got energy points, a reward not for being perfect, but for persistence. The results were explosive. Scores in the AI group leapt from 71% to 89% in less than two weeks. The control group, trudging along with worksheets, edged up from 71% to just 77%. Atlas was like a personal trainer for learning. Every kid got just the right challenge, just the right push. Parents started sending us late night texts. My son is begging for extra biology at the dinner table. What did you do to him? We didn't do anything special. Atlas just found each child's aha button and pressed it over and over. For the first time, kids who had been invisible in class were suddenly racing ahead. At this point, we thought we had our answer, higher grades, happier learners, but the story wasn't finished. Before we get to the results that completely blindsided us, if you're finding this experiment as fascinating as we did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. Because next we'll uncover the twist that made us rethink everything we thought we knew about learning. We were terrified the AI group would turn into screen zombies. 
Less eye contact, no inside jokes, maybe even a loss of basic human banter. So we set up a trap. Weekly team challenges. Atlas paired students randomly and gave them physics-based tasks like building a Rube Goldberg machine. Think dominoes, ramps, pulleys all chained together. What happened floored us. Cameras picked up more laughter than in the control group, 22% more in fact. Belonging scores measured through surveys were identical between groups and the best part, when disagreements broke out, AI students used 40% more academic vocabulary than their peers. One kid pointed at a shaky ramp and deadpanned, your hypothesis lacks empirical support. The room cracked up. Social skills hadn't died. They'd leveled up. Atlas didn't erase humanity. It forced kids to bring it back into the room in surprising ways. Then came the curveball. End of term assessment. Paper only. Phones off. No atlas to lean on. The AI group averaged 84%. The control group sat at 78%. Victory for AI, right? Not quite. When we drilled into the data, the cracks widened. On multi-step, no hints questions, the kind that demand patience and resilience, the AI kids dropped to 68%. The control group, a steady 77%. It was as if Atlas had taught them to fish with sonar instead of patience. They knew the answers when Atlas was around. Without it, their confidence wobbled. It was the educational equivalent of training with stabilizers and then falling off the bike when they were removed. The aftershocks came quickly. Parents demanded transcripts of every Atlas interaction. The school governors panicked about bias, and with good reason. Our audits showed that two English language learners consistently got lower estimates than their peers, even though their answers were correct. Atlas wasn't racist or malicious, it was simply reflecting blind spots in the data it had been trained on. But try explaining that to a worried parent. Meanwhile, teachers hovered outside the AI classroom, watching through the glass like lifeguards. One whispered to us, I'm not scared of losing my job. I'm scared of losing their trust. And the kids? They started calling Atlas Miss. Some even planned a spare seat for it at graduation. That kind of attachment to a machine might sound funny, but it raised questions that kept us awake at night. So we made one final tweak. Teachers returned, but only one afternoon a week. They weren't there to deliver new content, just to hold conversations. No worksheets, no lectures, just questions like, How do you feel about this topic? What confuses you most? What excites you? The result was small but profound. Grades didn't skyrocket, but the closed book gap began to shrink. Kids who had plateaued suddenly nudged upward by five percentile points. One student told us, when Miss asked how I felt, I realized I hadn't been thinking about my feelings at all. Atlas never asked that, and that's when it hit us. AI can simulate patience, humor, even empathy, but it cannot replace the unpredictable, deeply human spark of someone looking you in the eye and asking, how are you really doing? A month later, the governors voted to keep AI tutors, but only as co-teachers, never as replacements. Would you send your kid to an AI-only classroom? Drop your answer below, and if you want the raw data or the exact prompts we fed into Atlas, drop us a comment. What if next month we're handed smartphones to a reception class? What could possibly go wrong? We entered this experiment expecting a clear winner. Instead, we found a complicated draw. AI can turbocharge learning speed, personalize lessons, and even boost engagement, but it cannot replace the messy, necessary chaos of human connection. The future of education may not be teacher versus machine. It might be teacher plus machine, with kids learning to hold both accountable. And maybe that's the real lesson. The best classrooms aren't about choosing between old and new, human or AI. They're about creating spaces where curiosity, empathy and technology collide. Because at the end of the day, education isn't just about getting the right answer, it's about becoming the kind of person who knows what questions to ask.